Hello everybody, welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. I'm Brian Stewart. We're looking at our unit title here, Imaginary Characters. And as you know, there's so many different imaginary characters in storybooks and movies. I'm sure you have some of your favorite imaginary characters, don't you? If you think about your favorite stories or your favorite movies, who are your uh, favorite imaginary characters. We can really get excited about them, can't we? Well, in this lesson, we're going to learn about an imaginary character. His name is Paul Bunyan, and it's called Mighty, Mighty Paul Bunyan, because mighty means strong. We'll look at that in the vocabulary. In this lesson, we're going to learn about Mighty Paul Bunyan. He's an imaginary character. We can see him here. Whoa, he's really tall, isn't he? Paul Bunyan was thought to be a giant, right? Now, people think, you know, is there a real person? Sometimes stories are based on a real person. And people were thinking, was there a real person named Paul Bunyan? We're not sure. This uh, story, he's a character in a folk tale a folk tale. Folk tales are stories that people tell each other from a long time ago. And sometimes folk tales might have a true story as the beginning, we, but we don't know because nobody wrote it down. They just told each other for many, many years. And sometimes the story grows and gets bigger and the characters change a little bit. Maybe there was a really big uh, character a long time ago who was like Paul Bunyan, but nowadays when we think about Paul Bunyan, we think about a giant, right? He's many meters tall, right? And he has an axe here. This is an axe. And what does he do? He cuts down trees. His folk tale, the folk tales about Paul Bunyan were a long time ago in America when many men went into the forest and cut down trees for wood because the nation, America, needed wood to build houses and to build many things. So there were many people like him in the world. And so these stories started. But who's that? What is this? This is a big blue cow? Well, actually, it's not a cow, it's an ox. It's a uh, uh, babe, whoops, babe, his name was Babe the Blue, Babe the Blue Ox. And we'll learn about his character later. But Babe the Blue Ox and Paul Bunyan, they were partners, right? They were friends, okay? And Babe the Blue Ox was a big uh, kind of like a cow. An ox is like a cow, but it's a very big and strong cow with big horns, as you can see. So these are the characters we're going to learn about today in this lesson. But first, let's start with the vocabulary words. First of all, we have this person. He looks familiar. He kind of looks like Paul Bunyan. But this word is a person who cuts down trees. This describes Paul Bunyan's job. What was Paul Bunyan's job? What was he? He was a, whoa, it's a big word, a lumberjack. Lumberjack. Now you may know the word lumber. Lumber is wood. Wood from trees is lumber. Jack maybe just the name of a person. Lumberjack is a person who cuts down trees. Paul Bunyan was a lumberjack. Okay. Next one, a small fire at a camp. Do you ever go camping with your friends or your family? Sometimes maybe your family takes you to Soraksan or Woraksan or Chirisan, right? There's many mountains in Korea. You can go camping. At night, sometimes the family will sit around this. It's a small fire at a camp. It's actually a campfire. Campfire. See, we use these two words together and it's called campfire. So you build a little fire at your camp. And many people will tell stories around the campfire. And so we can think of many imaginary characters like Paul Bunyan 
people are telling stories around the camp fire. Okay, next one. Oh, okay, these kids are having a fun time. They look very happy, don't they? They're listening to a story. Another word for a story is a tale. Tale and story, tocateo, right? It means the same thing. A story is a tale. Before I taught you folk tale, right? Folk tale is like folk story. You could say either one. Uh, okay, so story and tale, same thing. Next one, total, a total. So if everybody gets together, they are the total, they are the whole. Let's say these people are working together. They are a whole team, right? They are the total sum of the team. If one person is missing, they're not whole. They must be together to have the team, maybe an office, a team in the office, or uh, some type of uh, organization. They are the whole team. But it's not just people right? It can be uh, a set of toys. If you have five different toys, they make the total set. They are the whole set. So in that case, you could say the whole set of toys, the whole set of food, the whole set of whatever. The whole, they're all together. Okay, the next picture, wow, this is a very beautiful picture of nature, right? Don't you want to go there? This is a place without people. There's nobody in this place. It's, um, nobody lives there. Maybe people have walked through there before, but if you look at the picture, there's nobody there, and there's no sign of any human activity. This is what we call wilderness. Wilderness, that's a long word wilderness wilderness now i said wilderness but actually it comes from this word here wild if you think of just nature right just nature nature natural is wild it's in the wild right we we don't live in the wild we live in villages or towns or cities but if we go away from all of that and there's no sign of any human activity, that's just nature. It's in the wild, okay? And we call places like that wilderness. There's no homes, no roads, no telephones. Maybe you can have your cell phone, <laughs> maybe you have coverage, but there's nothing there except for nature. Trees, mountains, uh, uh, meadows, forest, you know, things like that. That's wilderness. Okay, next. Next is an area where fruit trees are grown. This is not wilderness, right? This is a farm. It's a place, especially it's a, an area where fruit trees are grown. We have a special name for this kind of farm. It's called an orchard, orchard, orchard. So if you wonder where do your apples come from, right? Where do oranges come from? Where do cherries come from, right? Cherries, mashita, right? Where do they come from? They come from trees. And these trees are grown in a field like this. They're not just, you know, random trees out in nature. Uh, farmers will plant the cherry trees or the apple trees or the orange trees in rows. So they're all there and they're easy to pick. And that's called an orchard, right? So if you want to get fresh fruit and very cheap, Go to the orchard in the fall. That's when the fruit is ready. It's ripe and it's ready to eat. It's a good place to go, right? So that's an orchard. Okay, next one. Ah, uh, don't you want to go scuba diving? Do you want to see this underwater? A wild and exciting experience. If you go scuba diving, you will have an adventure because you can see the coral and the fish, maybe other scuba divers looking at you, <laughs> right? We can see this is an adventure, adventure. An adventure is an exciting time. It's a, maybe a wild time. Wild, maybe you go into nature. Or wild also means uh, not controlled. You don't know what's going to happen, right? So it can be an adventure because you don't know what's gonna happen. And it's very exciting what does happen. That's an adventure. Okay, next one, these kids are having fun, right? with great happiness. What do we say? Joyously. Joy. You know the word joy. Joy is happy, right? You say 
기분이 좋다, right? 기분이 좋아요. <laughs> That's joy. I'm very happy. But we say joyously, it means with great happiness. This describes how you do something or how something is done. If you watch a TV show and you watch it with a lot of happiness, you are watching joyously. Okay? If you're reading a book, ah, oh, 너무 재밌어요, right? Very good book. And you really are happy when you read the book, you read the book joyously. So this word goes with a verb. Read joyously. Watch joyously. Play joyously. So this word goes with verbs to describe how the action is done. Okay? Next one. Twisting. Have you ever been on a road like this? This is a very adventurous road, right? But a twisting, a twisting, another word for twisting is winding. To twist, right, and to wind, they're kind of similar. Uh, this is wind, not wind, <laughs> okay? Spelled the same, but different pronunciation. Twist means to twist something, right? You take a ribbon and you twist it so it's not straight, you twist it. Wind also can be uh, like this. You take a, a string and you wind the string. You can wind the string around something else. It just means not straight, right? It's winding or twisting, like a road. This is a very fun road to ride your bike on, right? Whee! You go around the curves. But be careful, there might be a car. So, Joshim Hale, but it's a very fun road to be on, right? Okay, so twisting or winding. It's a winding road. Next one. Oh, look at that. That's crazy. One eye, big nose, one tooth, and a foot. <laughs> what kind of crazy thing is that? It's unreal or fictional. It's not real, right? So we can say it's imaginary. You guys, imaginary. Whew, right? Big word. Imaginary. 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 Wow, five sounds all together in one word. Imaginary. If we think about it, you can see this word imagine, and if we put an E, right, imagine means to think of something not real, but to have an idea of something different. If you can imagine yourself in a different world. Sometimes when you read books, you can imagine yourself like in a spaceship or on another planet or uh, fighting dragons with the sword, right? This is what we imagine. It's all imaginary, those things. So it's not real, it's fictional. I've never seen a character like this, right? It's not real, it's imaginary, just in people's minds, in your imagination. You can also say imagination. Whoops, slow. Imagination, that's the noun, right? Imagination is the place in your head where you think of these things, or it's the, the, the ideas that you have. It's your imagination. Is your imagination good? Do you have a good imagination? That means you can th imagine many different things. I hope you have a good imagination. I'm sure you do. Okay, next one. Uh-oh, what happened here? To hold something together with a rope, right? Now, this is an extreme example. Usually, you hold your shoe together with rope. <laughs> Don't tie people up with rope, right? But what this is, is tie. I just used that word, tie. Tie is a verb to hold something together with a rope. So if they, these two people are tied together, they're tied together. Now, normally we tie things in our life. If you have a shoe with shoelaces, you tie the shoelaces together. That's very common. 
Many people do that every day. So that just to hold something with a rope, you tie it. Also, if you have many things you want to carry from one place to another, you could put packages or your backpack. You could tie it to the back of your bicycle, and it doesn't fall off when you ride to school. So you could tie many things with rope. Okay, next one. Whoa, looks like a strong person there. Do you lift weights? This person is lifting weights. Lift weights. To lift weights. And you get very big muscles, right? Okay, very strong and powerful. Another word for this person is mighty. We saw this word before on the title, Mighty Paul Bunyan. So it means that Paul Bunyan, the imaginary character, is very strong and he's really powerful. He can do many things with his body because he's really strong. He's very powerful. Okay. Next one, to move something from side to side very fast. So if something is moving like this, if you take something in your hand and you move it like this or up and down, you know, around, <laughs> let's say you want to mix something, right? So you have ice and lemonade and you mix it like this. <laughs> what are you doing? You are shaking to shake. You can also just shake your body like this, right? If you're cold, people shake, okay? Stop shaking. <laughs> okay, stop shaking. So shake is to shake. Also, very common, what else do we shake? We shake hands, right? When we meet another person, we shake their hands. That's what Western people do, especially in America, right? In Korea, we usually bow, but in America, they usually shake the hands of the person. And that's like saying, hello, how are you? Shake is an irregular verb, so we use it, it changes form in the past, okay? So we say shake, shook, shaken, <laughs> okay? Shake, shook, shaken. That's how we use this word in the past. It's an irregular verb. Okay, next one. Here is another uh, picture of a it looks like a cow, right? But it looks like a little bit of a strange cow. It's not a normal cow. Look at this. It's a bull used for farm work, right? So it's a bull. A bull means namja, right? Not yoja, namja. So it's a namja cow, <laughs> okay? But it's used for farm work. And look, it's got these big horns, Ooh, okay? It's got a big hump on its back, and it looks very strong, right? There's a special word we use for that. It's ox. Aha! Remember Paul Bunyan's friend I told you about before. It was a big blue ox. Okay? So that's an imaginary character, but it's based on this type of animal. A bull, uh, a namja, a male cow, used for working on the farm. They, you know, you can tie something to the ox and it will pull something. Usually farmers use the oxes to help them plow the field. Plow the field and what they do is they put a big blade like a big piece of iron and the the ox drags it on the ground and it digs a line and the farmers can plant their uh, plants in that line so oxes are used to plow the field that's called to plow the field and so oxes and horses are used to do that okay but oxes are very strong and uh, they may be stronger than horses sometimes. Okay, 15. Oh no, it's terrible, right? Mogiwata, right? A mosquito came and bit her on the arm. We can see that. We all know that, right? Oh, I hate that. Mogi shidayo, right? I really hate the mosquitoes. A feeling on your skin that you want to scratch. So if a mosquito came and bit you, right? You have a feeling, you want to scratch it. What is that feeling? We say it's an itch, right? I have an itch. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I have an itch. I have an itch on my arm. When I wear shorts, banpaji, right? And at nighttime, if I'm in the forest, all the mosquitoes really bite my ankles. Oh, I hate it. I have an itch on my ankles, on my foot. Oh, no more shirai, all right? So I have an itch. I have an itch. You can also say, 
my foot itches. Whoops. It itches. So, itch can be a noun. It can also be used as a verb. It itches. My foot itches. Oh, my hand itches. Uh, it itches. Like I have a bite, I just say it itches. So it can be a noun, I have an itch, or verb, it itches. Okay? What do you do? You scratch. Scratch and itch. Don't say I itch my arm. No, that's crazy. You don't itch your arm. Your arm itches, so you scratch it. Okay? But be careful. Don't scratch it too much because that's not good. If your hand is dirty and you scratch it too hard, you might break the skin and then it can get infected. So be careful, right? Don't scratch too much. I know it's terrible. It drives you crazy. I hate itching, right? But maybe put some cream on it or some medicine, okay? Okay, next one. Okay, to use an ax to make something fall. So before we talked about lumberjacks, right? That was our first word. A lumberjack usually use an ax and they chop down chop down trees. So they, they hit the tree with the ax and the tree ooh, falls down. So chop down means to use an ax to make something fall. Oh, by the way, look at this, ax. Before on the first picture when I was talking about Paul Bunyan, I looked at his ax and I spelled it that way, ax. It doesn't matter. You can spell it A-X or A-X-E. Both spellings are acceptable in English. Okay, so don't be confused about that one. Okay, ax or ax. Okay, next one. Oh, that's it for the words. Let's go into the uh, exercises. So now we're going to do the vocabulary exercises. Here we have eight words. Some of them are very long, but they're all words we just studied. What we need to do is solve the puzzle, right? Again, this is a crossword puzzle, right? Crossword because you have boxes that go across and you have boxes that go down, so it's a crossword puzzle. Now, we're looking at the words that go across, so the words that go across the page, number one is, well, first of all, before we do that, let's go over the words. I almost forgot, right? Let's review the words. Lumberjack is our first word, lumberjack. Okay, lumberjack. Second, campfire. Campfire. Next one, joyously. Joyously. Next one, whole. Whole. Next one is wilderness. Wilderness. Next one is orchard. Orchard. Next one is adventure. Adventure. And the last one, short word, tail, tail. Okay, now let's look at the words across, okay? Across, number one, the farmer is working on a peach, beep. Okay, so we're looking for a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a seven letter word, a seven letter word that fits this sentence. If a farmer is working on a peach, what is peach? Peach is fruit, like apple, or orange, or cherry. Where do those, where do those fruits grow? And if a farmer is working on them, remember it's a special type of farm where fruit is grown on trees. What did we say? We, what kind of uh, place is that? We said it was an orchard, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's seven words. We can put it in here, yes. Orchard, so the farmer is working on a peach orchard, okay? Remember, an orchard is where trees that give fruit are grown. Okay, next one. Uh, next one across is number six. That's our next word that goes across. The beep was hard to believe. So we're looking for a four-letter word that fits in this sentence. Now, it's the something was hard to believe. If somebody tells you something and you have a hard time believing it, what can somebody tell you? Well, they can tell you a story or what's another word for story? What's another word for story? Four letters? 
Well, actually, it's right here, right? One, two, three, four. And tale means story. If somebody tells you a story or a tale and you think, oh, middle soap, so, oh, right? I can't believe that. It's hard to believe. The tale was hard to believe, okay? Difficult to believe. Okay, next one. Across is number seven. She spent the beep day writing. So this is interesting. You can spend the something day. Now, if you think about a day is a long time, right? Usually it's about 12 hours when you get up and when you go to sleep. What do you do during the day? If you do only one thing for that day, you've done it the entire day. What's another word for entire? You've done it for the whole day. She spent the whole day writing. Of course, she had breakfast, she had lunch, she had dinner, right? She, but most of the day, the whole day, almost all day, she just wrote. Maybe she's writing a story. Maybe she's J.K. Rowling's and she's writing the next Harry Potter novel. And she's very excited about her writing. Sometimes people do that. They get many ideas. They've got to write them down very quickly. And they don't take a break. They just spend the whole day writing okay maybe when uh, maybe if you have some good ideas you get excited about those ideas practice that see if you can write an imaginary story maybe one day you can be a writer too that would be very exciting wouldn't it okay spend the whole day writing okay next one eight across it is difficult to live in the what Ooh, it's a long word too what word are we looking for? Where? Where would it be difficult to live? Well, think about it. Like I said, most of us, we live in villages or towns or cities, right? We need houses. We need stores to go to to buy things. We need roads to get around. Imagine if there were no houses, there were no, no stores, there was no sign of human beings at all and we were living there right we were living out in nature what's another word for that place what's another word for that type of place ah over here we're looking for wilderness and this is a really long word right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten <gasps> Whew, a ten letter word right wilderness is a ten letter word that means you know it's a difficult place to live it's a very di it's very difficult no mohimdaro to live there okay obviously it would be very difficult to live in the wilderness okay let's go over the words for going down now number 2 he went to africa for and what if you go to africa right it's a different place uh, different people different style of architecture many wild animals very beautiful scenery right so what will you have you'll have a wild and exciting time won't you what means wild and excitable time probably this word here adventure he went to africa for an adventure so many people travel to another place for an adventure okay so you might go to uh South America for an adventure. If you really want a, oh, a very amazing adventure, maybe you go to the North Pole or South Pole. And of course, you can go to Africa for an adventure too. In fact, almost anywhere you go, if it's wild and exciting, it could be an adventure. Okay, the next word, still going down, number three, a beep, long word, <laughs> is cutting down a tree. But in this sentence, we're looking for the subject, right? The subject. How do we know? Because here's the verb. So a someone or something is doing this. What are they doing? Cutting down a tree. Now remember in the vocabulary section, it was our first word. We talked about a person who cuts down a tree. So we're looking for the person. It's a job title of a person whose job it is to cut down trees. Which word means a person whose job it is to cut down trees? Of course, it's over here. Lumberjack, ooh, really long word. A lumberjack 
is cutting down a tree. So lumberjack, it's like the song. Maybe you don't know it. It's a long time ago. It goes, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I cut, chop down trees. I eat my lunch and I go to the lava tree. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of an it's an old song. It's kind of a funny song by a British group called Monty Python. Look them up. But lumberjack, what does he do? I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I cut down trees. I eat my lunch and I go to the lava tree. Lava tree. What's lava tree? I have to teach you that because it's in the song. A lava tree. And sometimes people say lavatory, but in the song it's it's you can also pronounce it lavatory. Lavatory is another word for bathroom. And English is crazy. We have so many words for bathroom. Bathroom, of course, is hua zhong shil, right? So you can say where is the bathroom? Where is the bathroom? Sometimes people call it the rest room. Where is the rest room. Some people even say, where is the, I'll put it up here, where is the toilet? <laughs> but that's not so polite. It's more polite to say bathroom, restroom, or lavatory, or lavatory, right? Uh, restroom, bathroom, lavatory, toilet, okay? Also one more, WC, but that's a little old-fashioned. WC, what is WC? WC is water closet because a long time ago when the toilet was first invented it was put into people's houses they didn't know what to call it it's like a small room in the house that's a closet but it had water in it you know a long time ago before when people didn't have they weren't used to having water in the house plumbing was new so they called it a water closet some people in some countries still call it water closet but it's a little old-fashioned Americans usually say bathroom or restroom lavatory or lavatory water closet more common in England or Britain okay uh, Americans will normally say bathroom or restroom anyway that's a very long explanation uh, we came from lumberjack from the song I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I chop down trees, I eat my lunch, and I go to the lavatory. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of funny. Anyway, that's lumberjack. Next one. Whew. Down, four down. We sat around the what? You sit around, what would you sit around? Especially when you're with your family, you're out in the woods, you're having a good time camping. So what would you, at night, right, you build a fire, and what would you sit around? You'd sit around that fire. What do we call that fire? Remember you're camping? So we call that a camp fire. We sat around the campfire. Okay, number five, our last word here, going down. Number five, we sang together beep. Okay, kind of a long word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're looking for an eight letter word that tells us what? That tells us how did we sing? When I taught you this word, remember I said that this word is used with verbs. It tells us how we do something. And the examples I used were, you know, if you watch television and you're very happy, how do you watch television? If you read a book and it makes you feel happy, how do you read the book, right? How do you do these actions? How did you sing together? Which word tells us how did you sing together? Well, it would be this word right here, right? We sang together joyously. So we were very happy and we sang together joyously. Do you guys want to sing together joyously? Remember the song about the lumberjack? Everybody, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I cut down trees, I eat my lunch, and I go to the lava tree. <laughs> okay, if you sing that with a lot of happiness, you sing joyously. Okay, well that wraps up the vocabulary section. Let's take a short break now and we'll come back and take a look at the reading section about Mighty Paul Bunyan. Don't go away.